Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a deer with some moon in its antlers. Uh, I think this is going to be a really fun project today. I'm really excited to bring it to you. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in a chat for our live show, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, welcome. Uh, if you are new to my channel, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, hope you subscribe, stick around, come back. We do these weekly um, live streams. We're going to be taking a break for Christmas next week, but uh, we'll be back in January first thing. So um, got lots of fun things coming up that we'll be doing. And uh, we paint these live during my videos. I don't paint them ahead of time. So um, you can see all the steps from start to finish and um, hopefully it'll give you some inspiration and help you along in your art journey. Um, <clears throat> We're going to be starting with a 12 by 12 inch canvas today. Uh, I haven't done anything to it uh, to prep it. It's just straight up, uh, straight out of the wrapping paper. I've done a little sketch on it just to kind of give me an idea of where we're going to place our deer, but we'll do that again later. Um, for the deer, you're going to want, we're going to have some like cloudy um, mist in the background here by the moon. Um, so I'm probably, and I'm probably going to put some stars into, it's not in my photo, but I think I want some stars back here and then some mist and things. So to get that kind of cloudy effect, you're going to want to have some sort of um, brush or um, sponge that will give you a little bit of that stiff, uh, stiff bristles to be able to kind of scrub those clouds in. So I'm going to be using a, um, a variety of different tools tonight as we work, but I'll mention those more as we go. And then for the deer itself, you're going to want a um, small round brush for the antlers and then maybe possibly an, like an angle brush or something like that to fill in some of the larger details on him. Um, so that'll get us through. And then on the moon itself, I'm probably going to use a filbert, but um, just use whatever brushes you've got that are close to, you know, similar to mine. Um, doesn't have to be the exact same ones. I've got a description, um, a list of materials down in the description that you can follow. Um, it's kind of the basic colors and um, brushes that we'll be using tonight. Um, and there's links also to where you can buy. All right, let's go over our colors. Uh, carbon black, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, thalo turquoise, uh, ultramarine blue. You could substitute both of these color for one color, um, which is thalo blue green shade if you want to. Um, I just kind of separated them out there into two um, to give me a little bit wider range of mixing, mixability. This one is quinacridone magenta, unbleached titanium, zinc white, which is a transparent white, and then that'll help us with the fog and things. Um, and then I've got regular titanium white and gloss glazing liquid down here. You could also substitute for like a matte medium or some sort of medium that's got a little bit of an extender in it. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Switch back over. Thanks. Zoom in here. There we go. All right, so um, one other thing I forgot to mention was you're going to want to find something that, you know, depending on the size of canvas you're using, um, I'm my moon is going to take up approximately a third of the space. So if you find something that's that you can kind of repeat three times down your canvas, then you kind of know it's about the right size. And I'm going to go just up from that's halfway. I'm going to go just up from halfway maybe with that somewhere in here and just draw out your circle so that you've got a kind of starting point. We're going to be painting over most of this. So I'm not going to bother drawing my deer yet. Um, we're going to be painting over all of this, but I am going to kind of want just a general idea of where my moon's going to go because I'm going to make that a little bit um, darker behind it um, for the stars and things. Actually, I'm going to want another brush. I'm going to want a, um, a fan brush to do my splatters for my stars too. So, okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to grab a large flat this is a two inch aspen or two inch aspen um flat motler i'm not sure why it's called a motler but anyhow it's got a kind of a shorter short-ish bristles um 
How's everybody doing? Are they surviving Christmas? <laughs> Do we have any new newbies watching us today for the first time? I'd be curious to know. Um, um, or all of our regulars that are faithful to join us every week. We appreciate mm-hmm. you guys. Yeah, we have a lot of our unusual suspects Hope with us. you're having a great Christmas so far. I've been doing puzzles. I got <sighs> two down already. I'm doing them. See, I learned this year. I'm doing them before the grandkids get here. So, <laughs> cuz can't can't get much done once they're here. I don't want to do them when it's their here. I'll say that. <laughs> All right. So, I'm mixing up the the two blues, my my turquoise and my ultramarine blue, adding just a little bit of burnt umber. Um I still you can see if I'm as I'm scraping through, it's still blue, so I'm not adding so much brown that it's turning it gray. But I want it to be pretty dark, nice and dark blue here. I may this may not be enough. We'll see. I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the water and uh, take off some of the extra moisture there off of it. I don't want it sopping wet. You can't really control it when you when it's got too much water in it. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle. This is a fine mist sprayer, and I'm just going to do one good spray over the whole canvas. What that does is kind of open up those pores and, uh, and allow it to kind of accept the paint a little bit better. You can also spray the back of it. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to do that because that will help with the drying time. Make it... Just get it nice and wet back there give me a little bit extra dry time as I'm putting paint on there. Okay, there we go. This is really dry in the studio, so that'll help. All right, so let's go ahead and start here with this color. Get a little bit more water here. Heavy body acrylics are pretty thick. That's what I'm using, but if you have thinner paints or like um, a student quality paint, like a Liquitex Basics is a great one to start with. Um, you may not have to add water. I'm gonna use this around the sides of the canvas, darken them up. Yeah, definitely gonna need more paint. I don't know what I was thinking there. That's a really nice color though. I like that a lot. And I'm probably going to need to To, um, dry this a little bit as I go. You can see how I'm fe feathering out my edges though because we're, we're doing so much blending on this. So this will help me to not have to deal with harsh edges here. I can just blend really nicely into these soft edges. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just kind of darkening up around the edges a little bit. And then in the area where the moon is, I'm going to get some white, and I'm going to use that with this color. And I'm going to get a little bit more ultramarine blue just on the corner of my brush. So I'll do a shade that's just a couple shades lighter, maybe, than what we had before. And I'm going to fill in my moon area and around my deer with that. And I'm just going to feather that out, try to kind of join it up with this area around it and get a little bit water. Now, if I put water on this right now, this is wet still. And so if I put water on it, I'd just be essentially like wiping off what I've just painted. So I would want to be careful when I'm adding water to my palette once the paints are down. I don't want to add them too wet. I want them to be about the same wetness as the paint that's already down there, if that makes sense, so that they kind of stick and that you're not wiping off what you've already done. So I'm kind of mixing up kind of a medium color. This has got a little bit more of the thalo turquoise and thalo blue, or ultramarine blue, I mean. Um, and this area is starting to dry, so I need to be careful not to paint over it too much. If it's starting to dry, it will lift when you do this. So you may want to wait, let this light blue dry and then do this part. Um, 
but there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, just gonna kind of go around it. And we're gonna do lots of clouds on here. So if it looks a little bit blotchier than mine, that's okay. It'll, we'll, we'll get it there. It doesn't have to look perfect on this first try. We're just trying to get some color down. That's the main thing. I'm gonna get a little bit darker. This has got a little bit more of the phthalo blue and it added burnt sienna to it instead of the ultramarine or instead of the burnt umber. And I'm gonna pull that in and very, very light brush strokes here. And just try to kind of add a little bit of that in over here. And you can see where I went over that area where it was drying. It'll lift off. Okay, there we go. Looks good. Let's maybe add some of this up here too. I'm just trying to add a couple different colors here, working quickly. This is actually drying pretty quickly for me, so. Um, and I'm laying my, my layers down fairly light, like they're not super thick, so they're gonna dry pretty fast for me. So that's looking pretty good. Kinda got that moody feel already. I'm gonna let you take that honey and dry it really quick. It shouldn't take too long. I need to get a like a, a dryer in here that's quiet, like a quiet dryer. I was looking at them, but they were real expensive. <laughs> I, Ulta was having some sales. I was like, eh, I don't think it's worth a couple hundred dollars. We'll just make Marco in the other room. <laughs> All right, so I'm just actually, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm dipping my brush into water and I'm wiping it on a paper towel so that it's getting out most of the color. That way I don't dirty up my water. When, with a big brush like this, you can just kind of basically need to re, uh, redo your water in one go because it, it will really dirty your water fast. So just gonna dip it in here and then leave a lot of water in it there it's pretty thick with water and I'm gonna set this aside um, for later until I can clean it with my soap and water um, so make sure that as you're working you're doing that leaving your brushes off to the side don't leave them in your water but um, leave them off to the side where you can grab them and just keep make sure they stay wet as you work in that way um, you'll have you won't ruin your brushes <laughs> and I usually just use um, dish soap and put some in my hand and I run them under the tap to get all of the all of the excess um, paint out of them and then um, brush them on my hand um, with that soap in my palm and it will uh, help okay so there we go that looks really good I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the sponge now um, you just kind of want to get a basic something down here Ooh, there's our subscribe button yeah if you haven't already please do please do they like your Christmas sweater I know <laughs> it's actually my pajamas <laughs> Shh, I'm not supposed to tell myself I'm being super lazy today. <laughs> she was like, man, I should get out of my pajamas. I was like, no, it's Christmassy. I know. It's awesome. It was like noon, and I was like, oh, oh, we've got a video today. It wasn't even noon. It was actually <laughs> afternoon. And uh, I was like, oh, I've got a video today. I need to remember to do that. And her, I was like, I need to take off my, put on some regular clothes. And Mark's like, no, do it in your Christmas pajamas. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm idea. jealous. I had to change because I got my hair cut. All right, I'm taking my rings off for this because I don't want to have them under here. They're going to snag on my glove. I'm going to put a glove on. When I use a sponge, I like to wear a glove because it will protect my my hands and stuff from the paint. They get gets all up in, it, in the, your hands. And I just dampened that sponge until... Um, it's completely saturated and then squeeze out all the moisture. So it's, it's damp, but it's not sopping wet. And I'm just going to find a spot and then just kind of twist, pin it with my fingers, like pinch it. I'm I, not pin it, pinch it with my fingers and that looks pretty good. So that'll be where I'm going to load up with paint. Um, let me mix my colors here real quick though. I want to get some zinc white. 
And I think I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow oxide, some unbleached titanium. I'm gonna mix those two together. So those will be your kind of um, yellowish areas that I'm seeing. And I can just dip into that for a little. Now, those colors are both opaque. This one's transparent. So if I want another transparent um, color with that, I can add like a little bit of ultramarine blue. I still have a little bit of this yellow oxide on here, so it's going to turn it kind of greenish. But I think that'll be pretty. That'll be a nice kind of, oh yeah, that's really nice. Like, like soft gray for our clouds. That'll be really good. And then I'm going to get some good titanium white, like a pretty good amount of it, and just mix that with what's left on my knife here. So I've got a transparent white, a opaque white that's mixed with, you know, a little bit of these colors. It's a little dirty white, I call it. And then a brighter yellow. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just gonna use this and pull off some of that color. And I also want to, um, I think I'm gonna go a little bit darker than this now that I'm thinking about it. Probably want a little bit darker back here behind the moon because I wanna put some stars. So I'm gonna just use what's here on left on my palette here. Got a little bit of the turquoise, a little bit of the, it grabbed a little bit of, of magenta too, which I don't hate. So I'm gonna grab that. Just using up what was left over here. And it's got a little bit of the black, the brown too. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker. Because our, our clouds and things are gonna, are gonna go over this and gonna darken it up. Okay, that looks good. Or are gonna brighten it up, I should say. really dark. I'm just going to pick a few spots to go really dark. Because I've got to have this dark underneath, otherwise it won't, it won't show up light enough when we do our light stuff over the top. channel in your Bob Ross there. With my large brush. With your large brush just slapping it around. Slapping it around, yeah. It is a Bob Ross thing in it. He used I mean, to slap it on his side thing. Yeah. Even just that effect, isn't it? You're already getting that kind of cloudy. It's definitely coming through. Looks like clouds already. What were you saying? Sorry. Oh, just didn't he beat it against the mm -hmm. leg of the eaves or something like that? You my microphone. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> okay, that looks good. And I'm trying to avoid having any kind of like hard lines there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this transparent white. Maybe a little bit of zinc white there. And my fan brush. Maybe a little bit of titanium white, kind of 50-50. And I need to thin this out so that it's, there we go. It's like an inky milk, milk-like consistency. And I'm gonna just do kind of right here around the moon. So just want it to be kind of behind my clouds. And it's okay if it goes everywhere because I'm gonna you know, this is all night sky, so our clouds are just going to be on top. But this kind of area right in here around the moon is going to be the most the visible area of the stars. Okay, that looks good. Alrighty, and then I think I'm going to 
to go ahead and draw in where my moon is going to be. That will inform a lot of my cloud placement. So again, we said there's halfway. I'm going to go just above that right there. Get a chalk pencil. This is a there we go. Nice. That's just a um, white charcoal pencil there that I was using. Okay. Very good. I'm happy that worked. All right. So let's go ahead and use our use our sponge now. I'm going to get some of this transparent zinc white. I'm going to start with that, the one that we mixed up with the blue and the yellow oxide and mixture. I'm just going to kind of start to lay in some clouds and I'm going to, I think I want to kind of rub instead of tap. I've got a lot on here though, so what I want to do is take my finger and as I work, just kind of soften out those edges. What are you watching over there? Well, I was opening up my free uh, conversion app so I couldn't convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Mm. But of course it ran an ad that it's yeah, never done before. So, yeah. All right, so that looks good. I really want to wait for the my stars to dry. I'm trying to leave a few of them visible. Let's leave this little cluster visible right there. I think that'll be nice. And I'm just kind of tapping and then smushing out the edges. I don't want it to be super dark right now. It'll get darker as we go, but for now I want it to be a little bit soft. And I'm also going to put some in front of the clouds, or in front of the moon. I always um, don't like when I see, you know, like, things behind the moon that wouldn't be behind the moon, like clouds, you know. It's like the, the moon's going to be behind the clouds, not the other way around. It's not like in front of the clouds. It's not that close to Earth, so trying to be a little bit more like conscious of I know it's fantasy but it's art you know we can do what we want to do but at the same time I kind of want to be at least slightly somewhat accurate so we're not putting the, putting the clouds behind the moon we're putting the moon in, or yes exactly that we're going to putting the clouds on top of the moon Okay. So I'll leave in a little pocket of that night sky po poking out over here too. I like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and start working on our moon. We'll be doing more to the sky, but I want to let that dry really well before I do any more layers on there. And um, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the Summit 6 Filbert here. And my, I'm going to go ahead and get use this dirty white that we mixed up. Get a little bit of glaze with it. The glaze is just going to make it um, a little bit more fluid for me. I could use water too, but I have it right there handy, so I'm just using the glaze. And I'm going to carefully paint this in. Now, if you do not want to have to be careful about this, you could use something that's got an open circle. So like I've used a mason jar before that I have a video where I use the lid of a mason jar, you know, that has the circle opening in the middle of it. Um, and it made a really great template for this. So if you don't want to have to paint this in super carefully, you can do that.
So I don't know, but I know the British guys ship relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, stocking stuffers, brushes. Yeah. Um, they're Blick. Blick. Um, yeah, a lot yeah, of places yeah. are kind of at the end of their... Guaranteed. Guaranteed yeah. section, you know. We're pretty close. Well. But there's also local stores, you know. Well, of course we can... It doesn't. We could be like Walmart and we can start putting out the Valentine's stuff. So Valentine's Day gives. <laughs> got brushes and yeah. all kinds of art things. <laughs> Links down below. Yeah. <laughs> it does help us. If you have Amazon stuff that you're going to be buying, yeah. uh, it helps to use our Amazon link there mm. down in the description. Yeah, even if you don't buy anything from the link from the list. directly. Yeah. yeah, it does help our channel. Yeah, All right, I'm going to flip. flip this around, just to make it easier. Whoa. And then finish. So you have all my Christmas shopping done? Pretty much, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yep. Pretty much. You, you're, as always, Mark never really asks for much. You're not, it's not a... But that's okay. I, I got a lot. I got you, so oh. that's all that matters. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. We got a lot of blessings this Christmas with our new grandbabies. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. Tempted, I don't know. We'll see. We may end up doing it there. I kind of liked it. I kind of like it lower. It works either way, doesn't it? Ooh, I'm not going to get much deer in there. Yeah, but there's not a... Well, yeah, you're right. I kind of like the, the chest being... Yeah, okay. We'll do it there. All right, let me get a little bit more white now. I'm going to get some regular titanium white and go back up here and brighten up right along the top. You're going to need a couple layers of white on here, and then I'm going to start to of put in the details, you know, there's the kind of topography of the moon. I've got a pretty decent photo of it in this there. It's kind of painting around those areas where I'm seeing the dark spots. And I think I want my dark areas to be a little bit more gray. So I'm going to get a little bit of the gray and I'm going to use it, or a little bit of the burnt umber, and use it with that blue from the background. And mix that in with my white. Very lightly brushing that in there. Okay, wipe that out, get some more of the white, and come back in. Kind of soften up the edges of that black, brownish, gray, whatever that we just put on.
again if if the circle shape is bothering you you can you can uh you know mask it off but we're gonna have antlers and things so we're I'm not really worried I'm not actually being all that careful with my shape the only part of it that's really going to show is kind of like from here to here up there um the rest of it is gonna be covered up by antlers at the bottom there so just trying to kind of get that area pretty good and we're going to also put some clouds in front of it that different from our photo a little bit. I want this area in the middle to be kind of bright. Yeah, it's looking good. All right. And if you're not getting the right shape, I'm really kind of getting weird textures here because of the the brush that I'm getting so or using. So if you want, you could switch brushes to a brush that gives you a little bit smaller um, area, like a one of the blenders or something is probably a little bit better. Okay, that's looking good though. Are you happy with that? And if you're having trouble like right there, it's not one to hold paint. That's because that background was still wet when I put new paint on it. So it was trying to dry and I disturbed it. So if you have areas like that, just let them dry and then it'll, you can come back and add paint later. It'll accept the paint. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush for um, a little bit more close in detail work here. And I'm going to also get, well, I'll wait. I'll wait. I was going to, I'm going to detail out some of these stars here, but. Let's go ahead and put in more of our clouds. So I'm going to get more of this gray that we had before, this zinc white color <clears throat> on this brush. And this is the Deerfoot Stippler, the 5 8 inch. Take most of that color off. And then here we can just, we're going to beef up some of these areas here that we've got color going on and we're going to bring it over our moon make sure my moon is dry though <laughs> don't do this over the top of it if it's wet <laughs> would be a bad idea I'm going to get some ultramarine blue wow that is really dark a little bit of zinc white with the ultramarine blue I'm going to do some of this up here Just different colors in this. That will also kind of help it be obvious over the top of our moon, what we're doing. Adding our clouds. And this brush allows you to really go in there and scrub pretty heavily. I'm going to do a few more stars while I'm doing this. Double splatters across the sky. Well, yeah. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> this, I kind of went a little... Nope, 
not wet enough. Let's try that again. There we go. Come on. They are not working today, are they? What is going on? Yeah, and then it's going to go everywhere. Wow. Okay, I'm going to get a different brush. You are out. It's so weird. Cause that paint is plenty thin enough. Should be. Yeah, it was so weird. My brush was not working. Also, clouds are not going to be on top of this, on top of the clouds, or stars are not going to be on top of the clouds either, mm. so that's why I'm doing this now, because... Is that how it works? Well, you would not believe how many, you go, you Google moon and clouds and stars, and you see how many people are putting clouds, stars on top of it, mm. stuff, like moon, and it's just weird. So, um, if I... It's defying the... Defying the laws of the universe, whatever, I don't know. If I uh, look all cute and innocent mm -hmm. and shy, can I open one of my presents early, too? <laughs> like the pupper? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it seemed to work for him, so... Uh, just wanted... it, it... I caught Fitz Pickle with his nose in his presence, and I got out my video camera just, uh, just to see, you know, what he would do, um, just because he was being so cute, and I was going to send it to my uh, uh, grandson. Liam likes to see uh, videos of Fitz Pickle, so I was taking videos and sending them to him. Anyhow, um, I got him in the best, the best little... Uh, interaction, sneaking peeks at his presence, and he knew exactly what I was telling him too, which was funny, because usually I think he, I think he pretends like he doesn't understand. I think he's figured out if I just pretend like I don't understand, I don't have to obey mom, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> but he knew exactly what I was asking him, and uh, yeah, he went right in, dove right in, got his present out as soon as I turned on that camera. I swear it wasn't staged. If you've seen the video, it's freaking hilarious. He's, he's, I was like, are you peeking at your presence? And he's like, oh. <laughs> I said, did you find him? Which one's yours? And he goes straight over to it and pulls it out. So funny. But yeah, he had, he'd had his nose in him, nose and around. He'd been doing it off and on, you know, since we started putting out presents, you know. But he obviously figured out which one was exactly his. You know, he he knew, uh, I don't know, by the smell or whatever. And he he wouldn't leave it alone that one day. And so I got a video of him doing it and he pulled it out. Yeah. So Mark's, no, you're not, you're I mean, not I, that cute. I can, I'm sorry. I can do the same thing. I can uh, <laughs> do the old man groan. Oh. What? <laughs> all right. Just. No fair at all. Just scrubbing very, very, very little paint. That's if you're having trouble with this, it's because you're probably putting way too much paint down. That's that's usually where people go wrong with this technique. Is that like you can see if you look at my brush, there you should not see any visible paint on it. That is where you want to be with this brush because you're basically you're scrubbing that paint into the canvas and you're. We should be getting texture of the canvas showing up and lots of really nice 
Lots of really nice uh, soft cloud formation. Okay, that looks really good. Um, I want some of my, I'm missing some like purpley kind of colors. And so I'm gonna get a little bit of the magenta and use the burnt sienna with it. That'll kind of give me a rusty color. Maybe add a little bit of this ultramarine blue that'll make it more purpley toned. We'll wipe that off. And let's use it up here. Just to dust a little extra color in some of these. That's pretty. Yeah, I like that. I'll just put it a few places, wherever you want a little extra boost of color. That looks nice. Okay, and let's use some of this yellow that we've got down here. I'm going to use the glaze with this color since it's not transparent. Um, and I didn't clean out that pink, so it's adjusting. It's maybe turning it a little bit, a little bit orange which is fine. Taking most of that out, once I get it on my brush and ready to go to the canvas, make sure you wipe it really well. Get most of it off. You will be surprised. There's plenty on here. We're getting plenty of coverage. We're just, you don't need a lot. Wipe it, always wiping it off before I go to canvas. If I go on here with super thick paint on my can on my brush, then I'm going to end up with areas that are solid, you know, just really solid. I won't have this really soft ethereal effect that I'm getting. All right, I'm going to get these three: the dark burnt umber, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. No, no ultramarine blue actually. No, just those three. Uh, making kind of a a medium tan brown. Again, wiping most of it out. I'm gonna use that up here. Add lots of brown. And that's nice. See, now we're getting that sepia tone, you know, kind of like a little bit more of that tone here. I'm gonna use that around the. Oh, that's nice. I like it. Okay, let's use it over the top of our moon. This is what. This will really kind of make it obvious that it's clouds, too. Over the top of the moon, a little bit of it. Okay, that's nice. I'm gonna get back in, get some of this, these two with the burnt. A little bit of that darker color, I'm gonna glaze with that darker color. Again, I still haven't cleaned out my brush, but I'm using so little paint that it's not really affecting these other layers much. And if it does, it's fine, because they're all kind of blending together anyways. All right, so I'm gonna use this dark and I'm gonna push back some of the clouds along the edges of where I want the darker color to be more prominent. Maybe a little bit more of that brighter blue. up my stars a little bit so what I'm gonna do at the very end is I'm gonna go back in here and kind of poke in and uh, add some of the color back onto some of my stars just a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this color with my cloud a little bit of white with this color and use that 
that where my clouds come in over. Just kind of extend a couple of my clouds back over the moon. And then let's add some white to them. just in a few strategic spots. I don't need it everywhere, but I do need some of these to be kind of brighter than others. So just finding where I think the light might be hitting these clouds. And really the, the ones on top are not going to be bright because they're but the ones that are near the moon may have some like right up at the top of them. So let's like the ones that are facing the moon, maybe give them a little bit more, a little bit more light. Nice. the clouds a little bit there. Let me get a little bit of a smaller brush here. ultramarine blue and my I'm going to get this zinc white make sure that we had before and some glaze make sure this is fairly dry I'm going to take this and go around my moon right on top of my moon and around it just to haze out everything just a little bit. Just along the border and around the moon. Just to add that hazy glow that happens. See that? Make sure you use the glaze because that'll keep it a little bit transparent. You don't want this to be too dark or obvious, but make sure you kind of soften out any borders that you see, any edges. This should just be really fuzzed out. Nothing, no hard lines. Okay, that looks good. What? The big brush, the two inch. Maybe, yeah, probably. Thank you. Yeah, I did. But That's on Beth. Thank you, Beth. Good. Good call, Beth. Getting some white here. Gonna kind of come along the edges there with the white. use it a little bit on some of the clouds again. Okay, looks good. 
let's go ahead and put in our deer. And I'm probably going to glaze a little bit more on this, but I want everything to dry really well before I do anything else. So okay. I'm going to take these off now. I don't need these anymore. Right. And I could have used this brush for my clouds too. So this is another brush that can do that same scrubbing that the foot stippler did it's a you know like a bristle brush deer, uh, hog bristle brush but these and the um, these you wouldn't want to add water to them because they get soggy if you wet them down too much so very minimal water you can water your paints down have the paints be watery but not you don't want your brush to be soggy get a little bit this and bring this in over here a little bit. circles everywhere. I'm going to scrub side to side instead. Okay. I think I want it darker along the edges, but yeah, I'm going to, I'll glaze it later. All right. I said that already. Let me just go ahead and do what I said I was going to do, which is I'm going to get the water on this, set it aside until it can be cleaned. Let's go ahead and draw in our deer. Too, too dark. I'm going to use black, I don't think. I'll use this. This is blue. Indigo blue. Okay, so we're going to start at the head. So this can be our main feature here. Let's make sure that this area is fairly dry. Not it, not really, but... Alright, so the top of the head is going to come right up here. And the first two antlers are going to be like right here and here. The first two that stick out. And then they're going to come down to the side. Angle out ears. And then angle it down like that. See this, can you? Straight down from the eyes, gonna have lines and then angle out and back in, and right about even with the nose, you're gonna come out and back down. 
in and back in this way. Okay. Doing it kind of angular. And then... Some right in here. bring it in a little bit more than like bring in some of the antlers a little bit in over the top of the moon all right that'll work <clears throat> make more sense as I paint it Let's get the burnt umber a little bit of black start filling in the main part of the deer head here so it makes a kind of angles out a little bit on the forehead and then you have the two eyes kind of coming in Defined cheekbones. Gonna get the white, the bl black hair. Mark out those eyes. And get some of the unbleached titanium here with this. I'm just gonna mark out over the eye just a little bit. I'm kind of drawing it as I go here with my brush. Okay. And then we have a lighter area around the nose here. Wipe that off and just use what's left here to blend that out, pat it out. It, the, the dark brown was wet, so I'm just kind of blending these two together as I work. But if you want to wait, um, you know, or if your black is, brown is already dry, you can add a little bit of brown to this color so that it blends a little bit. is kind of an hourglass shape. Kind of goes straight across and then angles down and angles back out. This is where the antlers coming out right here and here. And then the ear is kind of above the eye and out. And these are always bigger than I think they're supposed to be. Kind 
this straight down. And when you get to the end of the nose, then you kind of angle it out that way. And then back in. So this angle is kind of like that if you, the back leg a little farther away. I'm not going to do a whole lot more to the body there. Um, I might add a little bit of, a little bit more black here and there. I want this angle matched here. So bring that out. And then on the top of the back here, maybe get a little bit of the unbleached titanium and burnt sienna and yellow oxide. And just set the brush down and kind of pull down some streaks right there on the back. Use a little bit of this on the cheek, here and here. A little bit between the eyes, on the top of the ear. You need, <clears throat> you need to be talking this through like a, uh, a makeup influencer. The T area. Maybe the con contour. Contour, the T area. And the right. One. I think that's about all I remember. <laughs> the Cupid's bow. Yeah. Using a little bit of the unbleached titanium mixed in with the scholar to gonna do this. Lights on the areas that are sticking out right here. They kind of come from the muzzle. Believe it or not, it's getting there. Doesn't look good yet, but it's getting there. All right. Get some black. And some burnt umber. And I'm going to add unbleached titanium. So make it gray. I'm going to use that for my antlers. Make sure I'm adding lots of water because it will not come off my brush smoothly if I don't. So, all right. I'm going to kind of start where at the top and come down.
I like it. Looks good. All right. You know, it, you did such a great job on the background there with the moon and mm -hmm. the clouds and all that stuff. So, that I mean, it'd be a great backdrop for all kinds of different winter scenes. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, um, you could do, you could do a... a tank. <laughs> you could do I mean, we finish our sentences like that. <laughs> it's just uncanny, huh? Santa. Uh, oh, Santa. Sorry, I thought you were going to You could do tank. a Santa in front of the moon. There. I did a Santa with a little couple, a little boy looking out the window. Mm -hmm. That one a couple of years yeah, ago, yeah. or maybe it was last year. I don't remember, but mm -hmm. that would work with this, you know, just as a smaller. Um, I kind of want another one here, but I'm gonna hold off for now. I'm gonna do my other side and then see if I need it. I, I feel like I want it, but right now. Apparently there's, we should have done this in July because there's a, the full moon in July is called the buck moon or something like that. But it is winter solstice coming up, so it's kind of a winter solstice -y feeling painting to me. It's got that kind of a wintery feel. It's not necessarily Christmas, but I feel like if you haven't done your Christmas paintings already at this point, it's almost too late to do them at least for a gift you know That's and good. it's it's a good one it's a good transition right it's a good transition into winter to wintery mm. yes cold right okay <sighs> looks pretty good I might do another I mean, they're not they're not symmetrical, so you can really do kind of whatever feels right to you, you know. I'm gonna get some more white or some more of the unbleached titanium here, and then I'm gonna highlight these. And this is where I can kind of, you know. If one's coming in front of another, I can kind of make that obvious. I can highlight one more than the other. Maybe that one's crossing in front. to be dark enough on the you know against it it's kind of a delicate thing you don't want to do too much of the light color but they do need a little bit of definition I think it helps and then some of these can have a lot of darker underneath where maybe they're on the dark side of the antler away from the moon. The top part that's facing the moon, maybe a little bit more. Peeking around the edges of it. I'm 
It's looking good. Keeping on. And I think I want this to be coming across this way. Front. light get a little bit of titanium white add it in go over the top of the eye Get my black hair. Okay, just refining that face a little bit. Can I get a little bit of the brown go above the nose there? And up. A little bit of the black goes right here, kind of around that eye. Sets those eyes in a little bit. And defines the nose down. We're contouring the nose here. We're adding bronzer there. Bronzer along the cheekbones. a little bit of hairs just not not too much don't need a ton of detail because this is all going to be kind of in silhouette almost so don't want to do too much here but I do want a little bit of detail again some white and it's mixing with the what's on my brush here I'm going to highlight a across the nose there kind of a slight curve and then I want a little bit of a dark area coming around here and here. And then leave just a little bit of this white right here and here. And let's go ahead and give the eye just a little slight highlights too. Very slight. Okay. Alright, I'm going to get a little bit of a highlight on top of the nose right here. 
coming up. And a little bit more below the eye right there. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. Just do a little bit of highlighting right here. And here, I'm kind of just using the tip of the brush here to brush in some almost like hairs, you know. with this. On the back. Let's put a little bit of up here. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. sort of between the antlers and the ears here. Do you find that space there a little bit? I mean, I'm pretty, pretty liking him so far. All right, so let's go ahead and glaze now. Um, I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush for this. Let me go ahead and get a 12 bright. And I'm going to put out some fresh glaze, clear off space on my palette here because I've got no space to work. And what glaze is just adding, we've already done it a couple of times, but I didn't really explain what I was doing much. But basically you're just adding a transparent layer of color. So it's not going to affect your details. You're still going to have all the texture and details visible but you're just going to change the uh, in our case we're going to darken it up so we're changing the value a little bit and we're also um, gonna change the color just a little bit so we're going to change so it makes it really easy to alter your painting without you know repainting the whole area you just add subtle details and you'll be amazed at how much it you know, affects the overall look of the painting when you do this. Um, so I think I'm going to go with almost like a purpley color. I'm seeing kind of some purple. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue and a little bit of magenta, but that's obviously way too bright, right? So I'm going to use a little bit of the turquoise, and that with the magenta is going to create kind of a navy more of a navy blue and then I'm going to add some black to it to tone it down. Ooh, that's really dark. That may be pretty close to what I want though. All right, let's use some of my glaze and see what we like, if we like it, this, if this is the right tone. This may be too black, but what I want to do is kind of tone around my deer and blend him in on the bottom here to the surroundings a little bit more so that he kind of disappears into the background slightly more. And then, you know, depending on how much of this I use, he'll, you know, go be more and more blended into the background. But yeah, that looks good. So if I use more of this color and less of the glaze, see how much I can really alter that background color. I'm still seeing the deer though. It's still transparent, but it's a lot, it's a lot more opaque because I'm using more of it. Or it's a little bit more opaque, I should say. But it also helps when you're doing glaze to remember which of your colors are opaque. And it'll say on the tube, usually there'll be a little, um, like golden shows you against black, 
whether it's opaque or not. So there's the zinc white versus the titanium white, and you can see how much more the black is covered up by the titanium white. But it also tells you on the back there's a little sliding scale here that says transparent and opaque. Um, and then on some tubes it'll have a little corner, it'll have a little um, square like that that'll show you. That means translucent. If it's fully filled in black, it's um, opaque, and then if it's completely open white, it's transparent. So, um, and depending on the colors you choose, to ultramarine blue and um, quinacridone magenta are very, um, both of them are pretty transparent, so they're going to be great for glazing because they're not going to add any opacity to your color. They're going to stay nice and um, transparent. If I use that's why I use zinc white instead of titanium white for my clouds because they are transparent and so they're going to leave a little bit more smoky feeling. It's not going to be as covered. You're not going to be covering up other things as much. And I'm just going to use this color around here and I'm blending this out as I go. I could use my finger too, so you know, it just depends on how how you want to do it, but yeah, that's nice, isn't it? That's really adding a nice, a nice moody feel to the whole thing. I'm liking it. Got a little bit more glaze here. I'm just, you can do this as many times as you want with whatever colors you want. So we could do this with yellow if we wanted to add some yellow in places. We could do it with more blue if you wanted more of blue. So it depends on, you know, what colors you use for your background and what you want it to look like at this point. If you want to use this at all, you don't have to. But this is kind of what we did with that blue when we did the blue glow around our moon. This is what we did. We used the ultramarine blue with the zinc white and we went around the moon with it to add the glow. And I want this corner to be darker, so I'm going to get a little bit more of my paint and just use that up there to really darken it up. And of course, I'm darkening up my stars quite a bit, so I'll, the last thing I'll do before we quit is, is just, um, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to brighten up my stars. <laughs> Sorry, I always have to say that when I say it, the last thing I do, because I'm weird. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. Really nice. Nice and moody. And we added that, created that nice vignette around our um, painting, pulling in that color, darkening it up along those edges. Really nice. We still see all of our clouds. We didn't lose any of that detail. But now everything feels a little bit more moody and dark. And I can push back a little bit on it, too, if you get a little too much in some places. All right, it's looking really good. Let's, um, I'm going to get my number three round, and I'm going to do just a little bit above this deer's eye here. Right here, I feel like it needs a little bit more highlight. And let's do a little bit of highlight on the top of the ears here. Okay. Nice. Let's get my, I've got my angle brush here. I'm going to get my titanium white, my bright titanium white. And I'm going to go into my moon. Kind of right in the middle area here. Add some bright spots. You can do this before you do the antlers if you want, but I kind of wanted the antlers to be in here. because so I'm actually going to go over the antlers just a little bit in some places just to give them a glow. 
This is titanium white, but it's I'm not using it very thickly here, so it's not going to cover too bad. All right. some of that gray. Just using different places here. And this is adding another color to my moon too, which is nice. It's also tying in some of the other colors we've used elsewhere by pulling in the different grays we've used in our sky into the moon. Okay. Like it? Now that I've glazed, we need to bring back in some of the bright spots. So I'm just going to go back over just a few spots with my Like when I'm doing these clouds too, it's helpful to kind of just like let the brush sort of meander. So I kind of do the scrubbing, but I'm kind of constantly moving my hand, just jerking it up and back <coughs> so that it's creating some different effects. I'm going to get some of that purple and add that back in too. Just doing different random, trying to keep it as random as I can. <clears throat> I think I want a little bit of yellow on here too. So I'm going to add a little bit of a yellow glow. Now that that purple is dry, I can go back in with some of my yellow oxide here and my glaze. Now yellow oxide is opaque, so I need to add more glaze to it to get an opaque or a, a translucent effect. So I want to use less of it than, than the glaze. Use more glaze, less paint. Okay, oh that's nice. Yeah, that's adding a lot. I like it. Plus, it's opposite on the color wheel from that purple, so it's got a nice balance. 
and it's oh that's great okay I like that I don't want to do too much with this that's that's really good okay let's get the small brush I'm gonna get my titanium white and I'm just gonna pick out some of these little spots here that I'm seeing in the background and go ahead and make them a little bit brighter And if clouds are in front of it, obviously don't do this. So, you know, pick your moments here. But you've got an area that's dark like this back over here. We can put some stars back in. We are almost done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little bit of white right here on my deer, too. I'll help bring that face forward a little bit. some of the brightness some of them they're not all going to be as bright as you know some are going to be a little bit more dim can't all be the brightest bulb in the pack, you know. <laughs> brightest star in the sky. Exactly. Not all the brightest stars. That's You're okay. welcome. <laughs> Do this for the rest of you. <laughs> yeah. Putting some down here now that this is dark, we can put some stars down low. There's probably not going to be as many down there. So when you were doing the clouds, that was your deer foot stippler? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's... A good <clears throat> that's a brush that I've been using since I started painting just about. It's a decorative painting brush, but there's so much you can do with it with... This kind of painting, I just love to use it. I don't. There's there's a lot of versions out, but Princeton has the best ones in my opinion because they use that whatever that stiff bristled stuff. They're not all made the same, that's for sure. Some are um, kind of soft bristled, and those don't work at all for what I do. You got to have the stiffer. Um, more uh, natural bristled, like they're kind of like uh, I think they're hog bristle. So that's what can I have? Mark sighing because he just wants to say the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> if we were, if it was just him and I, he'd be saying some. <laughs> Sometimes I say something I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Don't I, say it. I can still control it. And he's myself. just like sighing over there. <sighs> Such a teenager. You're so. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I always know when I say something. You just like hear the quiet. You almost just hear his, his your brain working back there. <sighs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Those thoughts or do, do those things. Come on. I'm a grown adult. All right. <laughs> okay. I really like 
it's just a subtle little effect, but I think having the little stars in there are going to give it a little bit more of a celestial feeling. You could even, you know, make one larger or do a constellation if you wanted to. Um, let me know in comments if you'd like to see a constellation video next year. I've, I've, I have one that I've kind of thought about doing for a while. Um, it's got a mountains and, you know, night sky and with some constellations and I kind of been wanting to do it, try it, but, um, you know, I'm not, I don't like follow my zodiac sign or anything like that, but I do like, you know, starry skies and, um, my granddaughter's, um, Noah's, uh, bedroom is done in constellations mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, uh, celestial, celestial theme. Mm -hmm. It's kind of popular right now. So this may be one that she's getting. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> But it's probably not big enough for her nursery. But um, but I thought, you know, it might be kind of a fun thing to do, uh, you know, a painting. So let me know in comments if you think that that's something you'd like to see. Um, I always like to hear from you guys and your ideas for next year. We've got an idea for a beginner series that I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to be working during the break. Um, over the next week or so, um, in between Christmas and grandbabies. And it may not happen until February because <laughs> I'm going to have zero time to probably work, actually work. Mark's laughing because he's like, when are you going to work? Right. Sure. But that ain't happening once the grandkids show up. But um, I have an idea, at least. I'm not necessarily going to work on it right now, but we're going to be working on it in the next year. Um, to get uh, together kind of a new beginner series. So I think I'm going to start it in January. Um, it's, I haven't nailed down all the details, though, which it's getting, kind of getting there, isn't it? I've got two weeks. so We have lots of thoughts. I have lots of thoughts. Well, it just, I mean, it sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Yes, it does, for sure. It's crazy. So let me know in comments too. You know what kind of like if you want to see a series, what kind of what kind of series would you like to to see from us? I think we're gonna do gnomes because our gnome guy was pretty popular. So I think we're gonna do a series of gnomes. Um, you'd like to see, you know, whatever. Let me know. I I want to hear from you. Um, I I think I like how this turned out. Kind of. I don't know. I'm wondering if I put too much white in it now. Do I need to pull back some? I feel like there's maybe some brown. Let's do a little bit of glazing with some brown. Some burnt umber. Go ahead. You can do that while I'm doing this. I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue, too, with the burnt umber. Okay, go. There you go. We had a super cheddar tonight. Yay. So sweet. Our friend Jillian. Oh, thank you, Jillian. And says, Merry Christmas, Angela and Mark. Oh. Thank you for another amazing year. Love to your family. Thank you. You too, Jillian. Wow. That's amazing. Thank Very you so sweet. much, Jillian. Very yes. Merry Christmas. Thank you to everybody. You guys have made this year very great it's been awesome I can't believe it and we had one question okay regarding glazing with burnt umber and ultramarine blue here your purple okay they said that uh, they're pretty sure you mixed it um, yep but it's hard to figure out so could you go over that again yes the purple that I used before this one was ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta and then I added black to it so Got nothing, it. nothing fancy, just... Uh, I think I added turquoise, too. Yeah, I added turquoise, too. So if you have phthalo blue that you're using, then you would just add the phthalo blue and not, not a turquoise, obviously. Okay. Yeah, that's better. It, it, I kind of lost that brown when I added my stars back in, or when I added the yellow. 
sometimes it takes several layers of glaze, you know. I, I kind of go back and forth, add, you know, add some glaze, and then you end up needing to add some of the light colors back in. And it's just a balance, you know. You just do it as many times as you need to until you get it to the right color and intensity. But... Yeah, that's better. I like that. Okay, there we go. There's our deer in the moonlight. We went a little bit more blue um, than the reference photo I'm seeing. There's a lot more brown and yellows. Um, hmm. Do we want to go more brown and yellow? Uh, we want to go more tacos. Oh, that's true. Okay, we're going to be done. <laughs> You glaze it however you want. <laughs> you want more yellows, then just glaze more yellows in. But you already got the base for it here, ready to go. So I think we're all set there. All right, that's it. There's our deer in the moonlight. Hope you guys liked it. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you haven't already. We've already said it, but bears mentioning again. And have a very, very merry Christmas, blessed new year, and um, we will see you in 2023. Crazy. Wow, 2023. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much. Love to you all, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.